No, no. <laughs> Yesterday, it's uh, Yuchag for for those in the diaspora. I merited to go to Jerusalem. It's such a such a awesome place, and especially the people of Jerusalem are so so beautiful, so precious. I don't know if there is anywhere else in the world where you could see so many people that are actually dressed. <laughs> it's not like walking into a public bathroom. <laughs> it's a phenomenal thing nowadays. They're actually dressed. Not only dressed, they're dressed modestly. <laughs> with chen, with charm. And the children... Are so so sweet and precious. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> Besides that, they don't have crazy hairstyles and and uh, and Nintendo uh, uh, playstations. They're, they're actually sweet, beautiful children <laughs> that are dressed. Unbelievable. And the people are so sweet and they're so full of purpose and and and. And life, real life, not like emptiness and and just lost. They're, you could see that they're they're going places. They they have a life of Torah. It's an amazing thing. They just need a little direction, Bezer Hashem, a little not uh, not. Something really beautiful to see. And I was very impressed uh, with their behavior. Also, I saw. This sweet couple, a Hasidic couple, they're very short and thin. They did not take up very much space in this world, but they had a lot of possessions with them. They had a little, a little infant and a stroller and all types of bags and carry-ons. And they were traveling, public transportation, and just to get all their, the, all their stuff onto the bus, and they were changing buses too. Every time they went onto a bus, they they had to make a few trips to schlep these heavy bags and the stroller and the baby. It was something. It was like as if they were moving houses. And every, uh, you know, the, you're talking about a, a bus full of people. Everyone uh, there's bound to be a few people on the bus that uh, that are in a hurry, right? But no one had any problems with this, and they had they weren't pressured at all. They were you could see that they were doing their best to do it as fast as possible. They're very sweet, but it, it was beautiful to see how how they were able to do this. <laughs> no one had any qualms. Everyone was okay with them with doing this. It was beautiful. And then I saw also. Uh, there was a guy in the central bus station, Loaleno. He was missing a foot. He was sitting a very big, burly guy in a in a wheelchair, and the bus that he needed pulled up. It was a it was a double bus, a, a long uh, a long bus, and uh, the, the and he screamed. He screamed to the to the to the bus, stop! <laughs> screamed really loud. It was like it was shocking. And the bus stopped, but it had a, it over missed, it overshot a little bit. So the doors, the back doors that he needed, weren't were were too far, and he wouldn't be able to move because there was a barrier next to him. He couldn't move, so he screamed really loud at the at the bus, back up, back up. And the bus the bus had already opened the doors. He made sure he closed the doors so that it'd be safe. And you hear the beep 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 and the spit, and he had to wait for traffic a little. So when the coast was clear and everyone was safe, the the bus backed up. And as soon as the bus starts backing up, he screams, stop! <laughs> really, really loud and strong. And and the bus stops immediately. He says, the bus driver is listening to all his commands. And they open the back doors up and they have a special ramp that folds up. So they unfolded, they popped up the, the ramp and they and someone someone helped him right away, pushed with all his might to, to get him onto the bus. And uh, it was really beautiful to see how they doted on him 
listen to everything, anything that he wanted, or or even they could think that he wanted immediately. They rushed to do, uh, not to forget about not complaining or, or or a bad spirit. On the contrary, it was beautiful how they how they just wanted to to, to try to make things easier for this guy. And I was thinking, you know. Unfortunately, the way we look in this world, we we are kind of handicapped spiritually. We've we all have our little uh, our little sins and uh, handicaps, things that that we unfortunately messed up. And uh, who knows what we're missing? Uh, Shem should help us. Uh, uh, Restore our limbs, our physical, spiritual limbs, and uh, and the tzaddik's driving this bus. The tzaddik has this big, big bus, and he's trying to bring everybody to where they have to go. <laughs> and uh, and we have to we have to do our part. We have to scream to the tzaddik, stop, <laughs> help, pick us up, <laughs> bring us into your bus. <laughs> we should merit to be on the tzaddik's bus. He should stop for us and roll out the ramp and bring us in and bring us where we gotta go. Bezer Hashem, Nanach. And then, of course, on the different buses that I was looking to be on in Jerusalem, I had them giggling very strong. Uh, in the past, I might have done better. I once got a whole bus in Israel to be, the whole bus was giggling uncontrollably. I got them boxing. This time, I don't think I got the whole bus, but I got a. <laughs> I did pretty good. A cute little kid, Menachem. I don't know what Hasidus is. His father was uh, trying to digest what was going on, but this little this little uh, toddler, Menachem, he he was enjoying Nanach very much, and the whole bus was Bo Hashem. He had some good times in the bus, and then uh, at the Kotel Maravi, at the Western Wall, I did a Facebook Live video. I was streaming live. And I made a little new song, a Nanach song, and it was a little dance there, dancing Nanach, streaming it to Facebook. And uh, then I spot there's a guy who looks like Zusha, the the famous uh, the the famous musician. The uh, Zusha, he sings songs a little from Abinachman even. So I stopped dancing. I said, "Are you Zusha?" And he he was already like near, and he walked closer, and he was smiling, he was happy, and he's like, he's not Zusha, and uh, I'm like, you look exactly like Zusha, you, you must be like a famous lookalike then, and he's smiling, and I figured, yeah, he must hear this from a lot of people that he looks exactly like Zusha, because he he was he immediately understood what I was talking about, and I'm trying to, so we're we're talking. And he says, then he says he's not Zusha, but he's in Zusha's band. And then I, that which really confused me because I didn't remember seeing two Zusha lookalikes in Zusha's band. And uh, it must be a very interesting thing to have a Zusha lookalike in the band. And I'm thinking maybe he's one of these charlatans. I hate it when I meet these celebrities and I ask them, are you this famous celebrity? And they have this fake humility which really grosses me out. Oh, I'm not, I'm not here, I'm not, but if you're him, say you're him. Say that you're embarrassed to be him, whatever it is, but don't play this fake humility. I'm starting to suspect maybe he is Usha, but he has this, this sickening fake humility to him. I didn't, I didn't know what to think, but he's, after a while in the conversation, it finally dawned in my noodles. Hashem Yisbaruch finally gave me the intelligence to understand that he's not, his name isn't Zusha, the name of the band is Zusha, and he might be the starter of the band or the lead singer or whatever it is, but his name isn't Zusha, that's the name of the band. It's a great tzaddik named Zusha, Rabbi Nathan went to Rabbi Zusha before, before he, he found Rabbi Nachman, 
and uh, Zusha was a great tzaddik, so they named the band Zusha, but that's not his name, his name is Shlomo, and he's not Zusha's look-alike. He, there is no Zusha today, <laughs> there's just Shlomo, and he looks like Shlomo because he is Shlomo, and maybe you could call him Zusha, that's the name of his band. It took me a long time to figure it out, I'm very proud that I figured it out in the end, Bo Hashem. It was a very big relief, because uh, <laughs> you could see it was a relief, because I, I can't stop talking about it. it was it, it was kind of traumatic. I didn't I didn't know what was going on. If his Zusha's look alike, or if he's a phony, a fake, a fraud. But anyhow, it finally dawned in my noodles. I finally was Zoha to understand that the Zusha is the name of the band, and he's Shlomo, and uh, that's why he said he's not Zusha. But really, he is Zusha. Right? You understand? Bo Hashem. Anyhow, all this went down on Facebook Live. I was streaming it. And uh, then we had a little uh, chat, and he told me that he was singing Nanach on stage. Uman, he's going to Uman now, Baruch Hashem, five years. And this year he married it to actually sing Nanach Nachman Me Uman on stage. And by saying that to me at the Koisel, he also married it to say Nanach at the Koisel. So that's also <laughs> amazing, Baruch Hashem. And then uh, it was by Sabi Yisrael, and we had a little kibbutz there, a little gathering of Nanach friends. We had Eight, eight friends, uh, counting two, two children, two holy children of one of my friends. So we were eight souls. So I pointed out that in Noah's Ark, there were eight souls. There was Noah, his three sons, and then they each had a wife. His wife. So that's four wives. Four, that's eight. Four plus four is eight. So I pointed out we're eight souls here by, by Sabi Israel. And uh, th that's like a bechina of, of the Ark of Noach, its souls. So, Baruch Hashem, the big tikkun to be in the Teva of Noach. So they pointed out there was a Nama, a, a cult guy from Nama, a Nama cult up, up by the road with a friend. So it's really more than a... He wasn't with us, he was up up the, the road, but uh, technically maybe. So I was thinking that he he was the aspect of Og Mel Chabashan, <laughs> who grabbed on top of the dark to, so he went drown in the in the flood. Uh, anyhow, we did our prayers by, we did some group prayers by the, the holy tomb of Sab Yisrael, the precious student of Rabbi Nachman. Uh, for our friends, for the world, to print the lots of books, fill the book, the world with Rabbi Nachman and uh, all types of wonderful things. We were singing Nanach there. We had to cut it short because there was a wedding that, that the friends wanted to go to. I was going to go with them. And we stopped at the entrance to in the parking lot of the graveyard to wash our hands. And we discovered uh, there in the parking lot an abandoned coffin and my friends were very excited because there's an old custom in Breslev to to lie in a coffin. That way you could bring yourself to a better realization that you're only in this world for, for a limited, borrowed amount of time. And then you all alone, you lie in a coffin for all of eternity, not all eternity, till the, till, till the resurrection, maybe soon. So one of my friends quickly jumped in and uh, and then everyone wanted a turn to, to jump in and then it wasn't enough to be in the coffin. They wanted the, the, the they had to go and, and put the, the lid over them and to and then it wasn't enough to lid on it to be in the coffin with the lid on them. <laughs> <laughs> that boya, who's a nanach joint, who <laughs> probably weighs, uh, <laughs> I don't know, 200 kilo, 300 kilo, he sat on top of them so that they should really uh, feel some uh, <laughs> the gravity of what was going on over there. And then, they, then they decided they should make a little mock funeral, and they, <laughs> they started marching with the coffin. And uh, and uh, by the nanas were singing nanas. So after a few somber verses of psalms, they quickly broke out into singing nanas. And then they decided that they can't abandon the coffin there. They need the coffin. They need to bring it to to a busy neighborhood. 
and uh, put it on display so that everyone should realize uh, where they're going to be soon yeah, and fill it with the books of Rabbi Nachman which is the only thing that you could really take with you into the next world is the Torah that you learn and the good deeds the, your improve, self-improvement that's what you take with you your new character so they got busy strapping down the the coffin to the roof and in the meantime I realized it was very late and the verse says it's better to go to the house of mourning than it is to go to the house of, uh, of celebration to, to a wedding and it doesn't say to try to do both it says it's better to do this than that and I saw that I got the house of mourning yeah, it was a very joyous house of mourning because <laughs> we blessed with the way of being happy Rabbi Nachman says that it's very important to be happy always a big mitzvah a very important mitzvah to always be happy and Rabbi Nachman says usually the only way to get, be happy is to do something foolish and then it gets very complicated and tricky what, what foolish things can you do uh, well, <laughs> so when you have an opportunity to, like this to do uh, something uh, the Shem Shemayim which also brings a lot of fun so then that's uh, obviously a godsend for Hashem so we got that in and I saw that it was that and uh, not the wedding as is, the verse says it's better to do this than that it doesn't say do both so I stuck with the I stuck with the coffin and uh, made my break away and then ran back to this holy place in Israel by the holy tomb of Ramchal and Bikiva, uh, the middle of renovations here, Bez Hashem is going to be, it's already beautiful, it's going to be even more beautiful as all the beauty comes from Nanach, Nach, Munach, Mumen, and Nanach. <laughs>